Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Daves. And I'm Tracy Daves. And together, we're the directors of Global Food Providers with our home base in Panama. We're so thankful to be able to show you what the Lord is doing at this time through Global Food Providers. You see, about 12 years ago, we heard the call from the Lord to prepare into Central America to do something we'd never done before. <laughs> and uh, so you're talking to a guy who's been a business person, I've pastored uh, uh, music, music videos, concerts, and a little stock trading, and a lot of education. And all of a sudden, we feel that we're being called to farm. Never in our wildest dreams would we have ever thought we would become farmers. Uh, we were happy in business and in ministry, uh, helping people, feeding widows and orphans, living in Dallas, Texas, and suddenly we found ourselves being thrust and being directed into Latin America. One thing about me, from time to time, I hear one-liner commands from the Lord. They've never been wrong. And so we have high confidence that when I hear this one-liner command, we know we need to be on it and we need to be going with it. That command that I heard about 12 years ago in Dallas, Texas was seize control of food at the root level. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out food, root level, control. I think we're going to be farming. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole lot closer the, to the ground than I've ever been before. So that's, uh, with that, we d began to decide uh, wh where do you want us to farm? Where do you want us to, to build a prototype greenhouse, farm, uh, dehydration center, all of that? And we were led into Central America because there are 12 month growing environments there. So to make a long story short, we ended up in Panama, the Chiriqui province, the food growing province of this nation. We landed on a divinely, what would you call it, just a, a divine For piece trade. of property. Yeah. And uh, uh, the well that we drilled was a miracle well. Everyone gets 25 to 35 gallons per minute. We got 150 gallons per minute out of our well. We've been told we are one of four wells in Panama that size. And yet we landed on the property that has that water flow. Okay. We've also had many other miracles to prove that we're in the right place and clearly at the right time. So when Daniel had told me, hey, this is what God is speaking to me, I, I thought at first, we're not farmers. I, I'm not a farmer, you're not a farmer. We grew up in Kansas, but we didn't. We weren't farmers. So we said, you know what? I think the best thing that we can do is we got together, said let's take our kids down to the mission field. We told them nothing about what the Lord had spoke to us. At that time, our children were teenagers. Young, young teenagers. teenagers. Yeah. And um, you know, they, they were living the life of, of the American dream. They were living in a uh, you know, nice house. house, on a golf course, the swimming pool, you know, everything that you could imagine in their, in their nice private schools. They both were excelling very well in sports. So we, go, we take this mission trip, and three days into the mission trip, unbeknownst to them of what God was speaking to us, <laughs> They came to us in the hotel and said, we, have, we need to talk to you. We said, okay, what about? And they said, God has told us we are to move here to help the Central Americans. We said, what, what are you talking about? Get out of here. Get out of here. We really tried to play it down because we wanted them to know that they know that they know what God had spoken to them. So three days into it, that's what God had spoke to them. We get home back into Texas, back into their lifestyle, and they were still very adamant. We have to move. And so we said, look around, are you sure? We wanted them to know that they know that they know. They said, absolutely, we're ready sell the to home. sell it all. <laughs> And so we did. We sold it all. We went down to Central America. We landed in Costa Rica. And because they knew that God had told them what to do, and they had put it on, on, on their hearts, so we moved together as a team, the four of us. We have a, a daughter and a son. And we moved together as a team. We are sitting in Central America in a non-American home. And our daughter is back in, in her room for several hours. And we're, she's decorating a room. We're like, what in the world is she doing? This so, is like a hundred year old 
uh, farm, farmhouse. Farmhouse like in the middle of a coffee field. Yeah, it's not the American <laughs> dream home that they came from. So probably several hours later, she comes running into the family room and she said, this is the best room I've ever had. And I literally took my head into my hands and started bawling because only God could do that. Because what she came from and where she landed are completely opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And only God could do that. And both of our kids, the whole time that they were in Central America, they've moved on, they're adults now, and they're back in the States working. But, but the whole time they were here, and I am not exaggerating, not one time did they complain, mm -hmm. because they knew that they knew that they knew that God brought them here. Not mom and dad, but God. Wow, look at this, man. This is definitely cash flow heaven. If you're looking for how Panama rolls and, and some of the best cash flow for a small business, this is it. Not that you're going to make a whole lot, well, a whole lot of money, but uh, uh, you know, on each item. But this is serious cash flow every day. Well, six days a week. People are rolling their trucks in and then they go out to their client base and sell. Right out of their trucks. <laughs> As you can see, we're pretty late right now, actually. So the farmers are leaving and it's all gonna go inside to the in, uh, under the roof market. But in business, cash flow is the name of the game. If you don't have any cash flow, you're out of business. And uh, food is power. Everyone needs food. And once they've eaten it, they need more food. So this is, uh, this is definitely a cash flow industry that can give you massive power in your community and keep you in business. One of the things the Lord spoke to me in 2014, he said, phase two of the global reset begins now. Get into position for the next 10 years. We knew we had to be in position very, very quickly, and that's when we mobilized to buy the farm and to get busy building. He also spoke another word to me, which was, build an ark of safety to protect faith, family, finances, and future. These things he's spoken to us, they're not for us, but they're for you and us together. And so we have gone ahead and we have learned what these things mean and now our goal is to train 100,000 community leaders, church leaders, church planters, mayors, governors, business people how to do exactly what the Lord showed us to do. And with our prototype farm and dehydration center that we have here in Panama, we are now educating and training others to do exactly the same thing in their villages, pueblos, communities, cities all around the world. Time is short and we need to get in front, as I said before, of the coming storms. Now, we all have experienced the COVID-19 storm, which just hit months ago as of this recording, and we found ourselves from a little hidden educational farm and prototype dehydration center, suddenly we are much needed in our nation. We've been given license to travel 24-7, to distribute food to the needy, and in this COVID-19 crisis, everyone suddenly became needy. In Panama, people are in the lower class, the middle class, the upper class, but in this nation, with this one crisis, everyone became poor overnight. There was one guy I heard once who said, I was so poor, all I had was money. And you know, when you don't have food, and you don't have water, 
the basic needs, and those are the two buzzwords of the next 20 years around the world. When you don't have food and water, everything else falls away. That's what we're here to educate and to train people on, is seizing control of food at the root level, having adequate water supply, and being able to build an arc of safety to protect your faith, your family, your finances, and your future. God has a bright future for us, but we live in a very uncertain time. And we need to navigate through a Christian worldview, through a biblical worldview. We must navigate a successful future. Everything's changed. Our day has changed. The world has changed. The seasons have changed. And what used to work in the old no longer works today. What you used to be able to enjoy yesterday, it's over. It's a brand new day. And so we must successfully make the turns and navigate into this bright future that stands before us. Julio is one of our great employees here who works his rear end off day after day in the heat and long hours. But he's called to farming and we believe along with Julio that one day he'll be traveling the nations and helping others to learn how to grow food and to work hard to feed the nations. For the last few years I've been writing the books on this entire journey and uh, late last year before COVID hit, the Lord spoke to us, now, put them out right now. And so in this Global Food Revolution book, it discusses four facts and a wild card. And I'll give you the elevator story on the four facts and a wild card. Number one, we have population explosion to the moon. Number two, usable farmlands are going down, not up. Number three, technology stalled. We're not growing food faster. Than we, use, than we used to. Uh, and number four, superbug, bacteria, and virus on a brand new level have hit the earth and they're not going away. Those are the four facts. Now, fact four all by itself crippled our entire world in 2020. So be warned when all four come and the perfect storm hits, we had better be in front of this thing. And you don't just get in front of it by reading a book or by uh, 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 listening to a YouTube video once in a while. It requires a life change. And that's exactly what we are all about. Now the wild card, I call it climate craziness because the climate is changing. Hotter in some areas, colder in areas, uh, but uh, uh, desert, land that used to be fertile and now massive rains that used to be deserts. Everything is changing in our world and what concerns Tracy and I about the, the climate craziness is there are indigenous groups and there are very poor people around the world that cannot just move off the mountain if it stops raining. They can't just get away from the climate change in their area. They're going to suffer through it and many are going to pay the most horrible price. So now we must become uh, moldable. We have to be fluid and we have to learn how to grow foods we've never learned to grow before. We have to learn how to to, to uh, grow in colder climates and grow in warmer climates. We have to learn how to deal with high winds and every type of climate craziness you can even imagine. And so that's what this book comes out and boldly de declares. Get yourself ready for four facts and a, and a wild card. One of the things this book also declares is that we're losing food like crazy around the world. As a matter of fact, in your community, I can almost positively promise you that you're losing 40% of everything being grown in your community. How do I know that? Well, I'm a farmer now. We know how much loss there is. 10 to 15% at the farm level, 
10 to 15 at the grocery store and distribution chain level. And about every home seems to buy more food than we can use, and we end up losing about 10% more or less. So up to 40% is lost. How do we save that 40%? Many people are thinking we need to grow more food, but if we re would really just look back, we can save the 40. And we've learned one great way to do that. It's called dehydration, where you take fresh fruits and vegetables that are rotting and, uh, and they're getting too mature and too ripe, and we can put them in a dehydration facility and freeze their uh, their nutrition level by taking the water out and uh, giving those fruits and vegetables an extra six months to a year to be placed somewhere else where they're needed. Now, you're, I'm showing you here. Here I have a bag of superfoods. In our greenhouse, we're growing kale, Swiss chard, mustard greens, spinach, okra, and a lot of the superfoods that if you eat these foods, you're not going to starve to death ever. Well, we grow them, we dehydrate them. This little bag here represents powder of five pounds of superfood. And so in our rice and bean world, uh, and, and throughout much of the third world, if they will just take one heaping tablespoon of this, infuse it into the rice while it's being cooked, when the family eats that pot of rice, it's like they ate one pound of superfood salad. Now, in this world that we live in, rice and beans are the commodities. If they're really wealthy, they get a chicken once a week. Yeah. Maybe some plantains, maybe a little extra, but very few superfoods. And so superfood and dehydration is the name of saving this 40% going into the future. Not only do we know how to run, we know how to build uh, dehydration machines now. And it's not rocket science. It's pretty easy. It's heat and airflow. That's all it is. And we can save 40% of the world's loss just by moving on this. But we have to make changes in our mind, our attitude. We have to understand what we're in the middle of and what's coming. And then we got to move on it. It costs very little to prepare for the future and to seize control of food at the root level. But if we don't, it will cost us everything. During the lockdown here in Panama for the corona scare, the whole nation is, uh, is locked down. No one can work, no one can move. They're told to stay in their houses. Everyone gets to come out a couple times a week for a couple hours to go find food. We are way up by the volcano. And there's no way for these people to get down, get their food, and get back in time, uh, in time for the, uh, um, you know, for their uh, their little allotted time. We're up here almost at the top of the volcano, feels like, in El Banco, and uh, we're delivering, delivering uh, food packets to those that have not had anything brought up to them and they're not able to get food. It's a pretty dire situation for a lot of people. And so uh, we've got some care packs here, uh, Christian books, rice, beans, toilet paper, soap, a bag of fresh vegetables. This is like a breath of fresh air to those who have not seen people or, or food for quite a while. And we, we meet people that are, that are doing okay, and then we meet people that are in dire straits. Ah. Hola, como esta? Hola. 
¿no? Sí. Perfecto. Bueno, bueno, es, es para ti, ¿ok? Bueno. Sí, amigo, muchas gracias. Dios me lo bendiga. Sí, Dios te bendiga. Yeah. Ok, ok, hasta luego. Ya. Yeah. Yeah, so he's got a worker, he's gonna, he's gonna hand that out to the worker, and of course the worker is probably making anywhere from $12 to $14 a day, more than likely has a family, could be two kids, 12 kids, who knows. But uh, those are just little care packets that are gonna help them make it another day during this crazy lockdown. In Panama, the average uh, education of the indigenous here is 5.3 years. So you've heard the story, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Well, when you hit fifth grade, there's some serious information coming at you and you'd better have brain power to process that kind of information. And the problem is when you only have a rice and bean diet, there is no nutrition going to the brain. And so many people just amp out and they can't learn past fifth grade. So no wonder they drop out, they grab a rake, a shovel, a hoe, and become farmers at $12 a day if they can find work. And that's the plight and that's the spirit of poverty behind those with no nutrition. We found that superfood in the diet changes everything and it will give a young person the ability, it gives them the firepower in their mind to learn, to process, to get past the fifth grade level in, uh, through high school and into college. And this is very, very important for the third world. From this point forward, we need to have superfoods being grown and processed around the world for those that are needy and uh, who are impoverished and malnutritioned. The words that the Lord spoke to Tracy and I over the years, we've been faithful to move forward with them, but I want to encourage you, these words were not given to us, they were given to us, all of us. And you have to seize control of food at the root level you must build an arc of safety for your community to protect your faith, family, finances, and future. You also must get into position for phase two of the global reset, which is happening right now in front of us. You see, uh, as we built and came forward with these words, all of a sudden we found ourselves on time, on location, in a very divine manner. COVID-19 hits, the whole world's locked down, and we are in our pickup truck distributing food, dehydrating, handing out superfood and nutrition, and building relationships. We're helping people understand God loves you. He hasn't left you behind. He is on top of your needs. He can feed you, and He can do the miraculous. And so we've been able to be very, very uh, potent during this time when everyone else I know is locked in their homes. When the next problem comes and crisis hits, it's not gonna be so kind and merciful as it was during COVID-19. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you, get on top of this. We will help you, just connect with us. Now, one of the things we did as we were uh, uh, thrust into the limelight during COVID-19, we started putting out mobile food delivery packages. And so we would roll into a place with a pickup truck and people would come out of their doors. They would, they would run in and say, what do you got? I can't get to the store. I'm locked at home. And we would be able to provide food for them and a conf uh, confirming word of encouragement. God has you in the middle of his eye. He's not left you. He's not abandoned you. And then we've also been able to run up and down the roads and sometimes down the abandoned dirt paths. And you know it's a path when there's weeds growing in the center and only two dirt uh, uh, places for the wheels. And we've been out in literally the middle of nowhere over and over again, finding people on horseback, people in their lean-tos and their little, little casas, their little shacks, scared to death, locked away, yeah. not knowing what to do. Many of them haven't seen a vehicle or an outsider for weeks. And we were able to roll in with bags of food saying, 
Jesus loves you. Don't worry, God's not abandoned you. He is with you. And it's been an awesome opportunity, but it's one now that has to happen a hundred thousand times around the world. In your community, in your little town, in your neighborhood, you have to be in position for this next crisis. So we've got our friends Ray Dell and Stephen back here. They're with us today. Uh, Ray Dell's doing all the preaching and all the sharing of the love of God, and Stephen is do he's doing all the mule work, <laughs> handing over all the food, and I'm just the driver today. But we're back here in the middle of nowhere. If you ever find nowhere, we're in the middle of it right now, and there's wonderful people out here that have been sealed off, locked away for six weeks. No food, no jobs, no ability to get out. Look at this road. It's going to take them two hours to just get to, uh, j just to get to mankind to find food. And they've only got two hours, three days a week that they can get out and get back. So this food and this message of the love of God and the mercy and the grace of God is really making an impact in people's lives. They haven't seen anyone down this path for maybe a week or two or three. Here we are and we're just coming in the name of Jesus and really, really excited about it. When God calls us to do something, it's never ever uh, according to our flesh and what we desire. It's according to Him. The Bible says He gives us the desires of our hearts. They're not our desires. They're His desires. We never were farmers. Hmm. It wasn't our desire. We didn't grow up saying, we desire to be farmers. He put it in our hearts. The desire that we have is His desire. God gave us the desire of our heart. And when, when He gives us a plan and a road map, it will never ever be according to our flesh and our ability. And so I just want to encourage you when God tells you to do something, it's not going to be easy to your flesh. It's not going to be comfortable. When, when Noah built the ark, God gave him all the dynamics to build it, but he didn't know what he was building. A boat had never been built. Water had never come up before. The Bible says, don't be of those who draw back and are, dis uh, are destroyed. When we get out of faith, when we lose our faith, when we lose what God's told us to do, and when we don't do what God's told us to do, we become those who draw back. That's the only other thing. You're, we're either moving forward or we're moving backwards. And uh, he also said to the disciples when uh, he had 5,000 people in front of him, they said, Jesus, send them away. Uh, it's getting late and uh, they, need to, they need to go find some food themselves. And he said, no, you feed them. But we can't feed them. We've only got five loaves of bread, a couple fish here. There's no possible way. It would take a year's wages. And he said, let me show you how to do it. And then he cracked the heavens open and showed them how to bring a miracle from the fourth dimension down into the third where 5,000 people were fed. And at the end, there were 12 baskets left over, one for each disciple. And that's happening today in Panama. Uh, and it, wants, it needs to happen in your life, in your family, in your business, in your community. It needs to happen. And God has made a way for us to feed the world. And so remember this, action is needed. Action must be taken now. Time is short. My book says, food is power. My spiritual father always told me when I was a young man, food is power and whoever has the food has the power. No food, you stay at home. If you've got food, you have the power to go to your community and help. We want to bless you and we hope to meet you very, very soon. Amen.
The other day we got a phone call from Pastor Gabriel. He's a friend of ours. We've worked with him many times. He's in charge of multiple churches down in Finca Blanco in the Puerto Amoyas area. These guys were locked down because of the COVID problems. They're having a lot of issues in the big town, but this also affected them out in the middle of nowhere in the banana fields, the old Chiquita fields. And so because of the new laws, they're not able to get out and buy food and take care of their families. They're not allowed to work. They're locked in their homes. So he called us and he said, hey, we're in trouble here. We've got about 150 families that are in deep need of food. We can't get out to get it. So we activated the call. Our team put the call out to people in Canada, Europe, and US, all through Latin America, and all of a sudden funds came in. And so we loaded up the trucks with rice, beans, vegetables, and took two big truckloads down, 300 bags, about 7,500 pounds of food, and we distributed all day long to these families in these little communities. I'm Dr. Daniel Daves, and we are in Finca Blanco, Panama. If you've ever looked on the map and found nowhere, well, this is right in the middle of nowhere. We're out 30 minutes in the middle of the plantain and banana fields. The old Chiquita plantation, when it folded, these communities went to nothing. They've been living in poverty, but we have an opportunity here. These guys were locked down because of the horrid corona problem, and uh, they have no access to food. They can't legally come out of their houses and go to work. They can't legally come out of their houses and go get food 35, 40 minutes away. So we're bringing a couple truckloads of necessity food provision for them in the name of Jesus to help them get through this critical period. Pastor Gabriel, is a wonderful man who has churches in all the little uh, communities around here and we're helping him provide food to his people and to those that don't know the Lord who are struggling with no jobs and no food. In this country, if you don't work, you don't eat. And in this country, when people aren't eating, we go to work. So we're saddling up, it's time to get to work. did it all in the name of Jesus. We told them God has not forgotten about you. He heard your prayer and people from around the world responded and wanted to help their brothers and sisters. The people were very, very blessed. They were clapping and shouting and they were so happy to see the trucks come in with the food that they so desperately needed for their families. And so going along with us today on this video tour, you've been able to ride shotgun with us and see exactly what happens as we go feed the poor and those who are desperate in need all around Chiriqui and through Panama. Thank you for your love and your prayers. Thank you for your support with Global Food Providers. 
It's time to get to work when people can't work and eat.